All right, Jam, give it your best shot. Okay, here we go. Ninjala! I'd say it's more like Ninjala! <laughs> that was pretty good. Okay, let's try again. <clears throat> Ninjala! Ninjala! Ninjala is a free-to-play multiplayer battle game that has finally landed exclusively on the Switch. Hey, Will, do you want to try and take a crack at explaining this game's wacky world? I'll certainly try. Long ago, the world was guarded by a clan of ninja whose powers may have come from an asteroid. It's not overly clear. Now, decades later, the World Ninja Association has been formed in order to find the next generation of warriors. These potential candidates must fight to prove their worth. There's also a mysterious property known as Ninja Gum that helps fighters summon the strength of Shinobi. Let's go! Ninja Gum Battle Royale, I got it all right. Couldn't have said it better myself. And nice segue there mentioning the gum, as it does form this game's sticky foundations. There's your standard light and heavy attacks. You can dash and run up walls. But the big game changer is that your weapon can be almost anything. Due to the power of the ninja gum, your melee attack can be a simple Ippon Katana, a yo-yo with ranged abilities, or even a donut. Plus, you can summon a big bubble of gum to shoot at an enemy or help you construct a larger, more powerful weapon. You can also morph into items scattered around the map for a short time. Taking the idea that a ninja can blend into any environment to the extreme. And if bonking people over the head with a corn cob wasn't fun enough, the whimsical ninja gum allows for a whole variety of special moves. Once your super move is fully charged, you can unleash its devastating ability. From a dragon that deals damage to your closest enemy, to a sticky wad of gum that instantly knocks out your opponent. Taking cues from its squiddy shooty brother, Splatoon, Ninjala just oozes charm and style in all its strange attacks. Now, with so many moves and attacks at my disposal, I did find the controls a little confusing up front. Using the right trigger for my basic attack just didn't feel as intuitive as I'd like. While I agree it is a bit of a shake-up to the expected control layout, I actually didn't find it that off-putting. Mapping each move to a designated button took away the reliance on button combos and made combat feel more streamlined in a way. I know that the right trigger will give me a quick jab and the X button will launch my special move. The online battle arena is punishing enough without having to worry about playing Twister with your digits. Yeah, that's a fair point. No matter how confident I thought I was with the controller, it did not help online. There's currently two game modes on offer, a simple eight player battle royale match or a 4v4 team battle. Whilst it's nice to have teammates backing you up, nothing really tops the exhilarating rush of the battle royale, desperately trying to accumulate more points than all of your fellow ninja, which I rarely did. Those smug anime faces will haunt me forever, alongside the soft sobbing of my poor failed ninja. I will say though, despite the chaos, there is still room to plan your attacks. After about your 20th KO, you'll need to start taking note of your opponent's attacks. Taking a moment to decipher how the flurry of movement worked and what it did to you, you can try to get the upper hand. Try being the important word here. Oh, can I take out two of you with one go? Never mind. Fine. There's a surprising amount of depth hidden beneath this fast-paced button-mashing combat. Though if, like me, brain is slow, you only have to wait and sit in shock for about three seconds before you're thrust back into battle. And aside from opponents, you can also destroy respawning drones. With each respawn, they grow in size and point value. Again, like Splatoon, if you're not confident in taking the brunt of the fight, you can just try and earn a few additional points by taking on the optional objectives. Again, try being the important word. Ah, those pesky ninja, there's no escape. Now this game requires a constant internet connection, so you should absolutely keep that in mind. The game constantly checks to make sure you're still online with every button you press. Even the opening tutorial videos aren't in-game. They pop up in a separate browser tab. Despite relying on a steady connection, though, it took no time to find a match online. So it's safe to say the servers are holding steady. Plus, you won't need Nintendo's paid online subscription for the multiplayer. So you'll just need to make sure your fellow ninjas have a strong internet connection. Uh, 
Uh, I think what Jen was going to say there was you need to have a strong internet connection. How ironic. Well, while you wait for your mates to jump back online, you can always check out the single player mode. You'll take on the role of up and coming ninja Van as he's trained by his master ninja grandpa. The story is told in these lovely motion comic panels and each episode acts as a little training mission, teaching you how to fully utilize your abilities. We also get to experience a lot more of Ninjala's weird charming world and fight some bizarre alien bosses. Only the first chapter has dropped so far, but I'm super keen to see how much deeper into the weird we get to go. The only downside is that you can't play the story mode on the go because you'll still need a solid- Internet connection. Yeah, it's sad there wasn't more to do offline, like maybe a version with both modes filled with AI baddies. There's also only two maps in rotation as well. And whilst they each offer a unique landscape to traverse and fight upon, the game does currently feel a little lacking in content. But given how quickly the community has jumped on board, hopefully we'll see it expand in the future. But Gem, we do have to talk about the ninja gum elephant in the room. Despite being free to play, Ninjala does have microtransactions. Pretty quickly, you're introduced to the game's ninja pass system with points earned unlocking different tiers, which unlock different items. You want any of that, you'll have to pay for the pass. There's also a few cosmetic items that can be bought from the store, and the story mode itself is a pay to play on a chapter by chapter basis. And after being sold on this being a free experience, it kind of hurts to see dollar signs. Yeah, I'd happily pay for the game just to avoid seeing those dreaded microtransactions, because what I do see here is a pretty fun multiplayer experience. There's some really unique abilities and attacks that I'm so keen to master. Plus, jumping online with friends only heightens the chaos and colour. Yeah, I did a thing! I'm giving Ninjala a solid four out of five rubber chickens. It's just simple frantic fun, right? Though I had my controller troubles early on, the constant thrill of the beat-em-up makes it pretty hard to put down. So I'm giving it three and a half out of five rubber chickens. Ninjala! Ninjala! Ninjala!